Hyphen HE400SE seems to be criticized by some and laughed by others. The opinions about this headphone seem to be so vastly different, depending on who you ask, that it's unbelievable they're talking about the same pair of headphones. So, what's up with it? HE400SE is a stupidly cheap open back planar magnetic headphone. Its price has dropped to $109, that's really cheap. Being a budget planar, it still offers Hyphen's rounded off stealth magnets technology to achieve less distortion and more transparency in sound. Stealth magnets used to be present only in higher-end headphones, but as we can see, they're possible to implement at a very low price. They don't feel like top-of-the-line product, at all. Hmm, maybe because they aren't. I'm not going to complain about it, as they cost just a little over $100. Moreover, I did not find any potential points of failure. They simply aren't made entirely out of metal, but rather plastic. The ear caps, covers and headband are all plastic. The only metal part is the yoke. They feature the Diva style solid headband without the suspension strap. They are quite lightweight though, so it shouldn't really result in any hotspot on your head. Ear caps swivel, tilt and can be adjusted. But I'm really not a fan of this type of adjustment. It doesn't feel right when I do it. Doesn't sound right when I say it. The pads present on the HE400SE can be either amazing or not so great for you. They are generally really soft, angled to fit your head shape better, and hybrid, meaning three different types of materials to achieve ultimate comfort in contact with your head and to improve the sound. But the thing you need to put into consideration about them is the inner diameter of them. Your ears are somewhat likely not to fit entirely inside. In that case, they are going to touch the pads from the inside. For some folks, it's not a problem. For others, it can get slightly uncomfortable. I wouldn't be too worried about it though. At the end of the day, just a little soft touch never hurt nobody. Sensitivity of 91 decibels and the impedance of 32 ohms is a combination that makes them want some juice to unfold their potential. Nothing crazy is needed, don't get me wrong. I believe that you're going to be just fine with most dedicated amps that are somewhat decent. But I definitely wouldn't recommend using them without any external amplification though as their loudness and sound quality can easily degrade, leading to a tiny, thin and quiet sound. Tonally, they sound… interesting. I found many frequency response graphs and they're vastly different from each other. Some indicate a huge drop of indie bass and some linear response all the way down to 20 Hz. I believe that this frequency response is the most true to life. Starting from the bass, we can see that the extension is simply lacking below 60 Hz. It may seem like they don't have a lot of slam and punch in the bass region, but from my experience, they absolutely have it. It's not crazy, for sure, but they can definitely hit somewhat hard in the bass. There isn't a lot of information and detail in the lows, but they're clean and pleasant. Mid sounds just like every other hyphen headphone, with a larger dip at around 2kHz, which emphasizes even more the boosted treble. The mid sound quite muffled for some reason, which I'm not a huge fan of. Highs are alright though, there is some detail, not a crazy amount. It's not the brightest headphone on the market either. There are a bunch of typical peaks and dips, which is a common characteristic of planar magnetic technology. They don't really affect the sound nearly as much as it looks like. Now the sound stage. It's pretty narrow and it doesn't get wider no matter what you listen to. It's not too precise neither. So if you're looking for a wide sound stage, look elsewhere. But for the price, it's pretty nice. There are much narrower sounding headphones on the market, even for a higher price tag. Because of the narrow sound stage, the position is also lacking a little bit, but it's still decent. In games specifically, I've had no problems telling which way the enemies are making sounds from. Vocals are a little bit backed off. They don't cut right through the mix, but rather stay blended in. That doesn't make them sound boring though, just not so forward compared to the rest of the mix and the instruments. For the detail retrieval, it is really good for the price, considering it costs around $100 at the moment. It obviously can't compete with higher-end headphones in terms of detail retrieval, but that would be a bit too much to ask for. It simply doesn't quite give you the sense of clarity present in other, more expensive options. The sound can seem a little too muffled, which I'm not a fan of, but at this price, with that great tonality and other characteristics, I think it shouldn't be a problem to take one compromise, which is just that.